Welcome to Shifting Schools, episode 242. All right, welcome back to Shifting Schools. Great to be here once again with Trisha. We just got done taping a great episode with Joe. Joe is a teacher at Emerson School in Ann Arbor, Michigan, who started podcasting with his students, creating the Eagles View podcast. And you can get the show notes uh, for all the links as today we dig into podcasting with students. But before we get to today's guest, Trisha, what is a thought that you have as you reflect on the conversation we just had? What's one, one big takeaway for you? Yeah, my shifted thought is that whenever we have a new initiative in a school or we're embarking on a new project like Joe talks about in this episode, let's take the pressure off of ourselves to feel like we have to know all of the answers that we need to have the completed blueprint right from the get-go because Joe will talk about how the show evolved with the students. And so I think sometimes if we try to sort out all of the details, what we're actually doing is stealing some student agency. So it's important to leave that room that's going to allow us to model flexible thinking. Um, And again, that's going to make space for student leadership. Yeah. And listen to the part of the podcast where his students actually fired him uh, from being the producer of the podcast as well. So that's that's a great story in here. Uh, for listeners today, what are three things that you think listeners should really hone in on for this episode? Do you want to get us started? What's your first one? The first one is I love that Joe talks about how important it is to sometimes just start small. And I think that's good advice for us professionally and personally. So again, thinking about what might be some of the incremental steps uh, for a project like this, or what can we do to make this project a bit more manageable is great advice. I love that. I think another one is this idea of releasing control. You know, we can even say gradual release of control. As you're getting set up as a teacher, you're probably going to be, you know, heavy handed in the making sure the scripts are written, helping kids click the report cord button. There's going to be some probably post editing or putting clips together. And you're going to have to manage a lot of that in the beginning. But as we kind of hear from Joe today, over time, you get your leaders and there's different ways to include kids uh, who might not do the recordings, but get them involved in doing some of that behind the scenes stuff. And there's this gradual release of control to next thing you know, you've got a podcast that's actually running itself and you're, you become a manager of, of the learning, uh, of the learning environment as kids kind of take it on. uh, And it becomes, it gets a life of its own, which is the best part about podcasting with kids. That's right. And Joe also talks about how podcasting is a great opportunity for students to learn how to be more receptive to feedback, right? When we have projects that have an authentic audience, it's really great to build in sort of those hinge points where we're going to pause, collect feedback, create our own feedback, review our own work. Um, And again, that that's a practice that we need to do again and again and again, you know, being open to Critical feedback isn't easy, but it certainly gets easier when we have multiple attempts at doing so. Yeah. And just a reminder, if you're a teacher after this episode, if you're all hyped up about going and starting a podcast project with your students, uh, Joe talks about some of the resources we have at Shifting Schools. We do have a podcasting course that you can download and go through as well that just helps you get started. That's all about starting podcast with students. And you actually, Joe talks about one of the tips that he heard on the podcast here uh, that he actually implemented the day that we recorded this. So that's great as well. But before we get to the interview, here's a word from today's sponsors. Hey, Shifting Schools podcast family. Are you looking for another podcast to get into over your end of term break? You might want to check out the podcast, Get Your Binge On. Get Your Binge On is founded and hosted by Jessica Bolton. If you're looking for your next best TV viewing experience or a great film to enjoy, her podcast gives you a sneak peek at what you might want to explore. Now, here's the bonus. For those of you that teach the art and craft of review writing, did you know that your students can suggest a TV series or film for Jessica to review on her podcast? That's a great way for students to compare their critical reviews with what she says on her podcast. To learn more, head over to our show notes. All 
All right, we're excited for you to hear from Joe, the teacher behind the student produced podcast, The Eagle View Podcast. This is a great one that hopefully will motivate you to go out and start podcasting with your students. And with that, on with the show. All right, welcome back to another Shifting Schools podcast. We're excited to uh, go all the way to Michigan which, you know, is great because it's kind of halfway between Trisha in Ontario and me here in Seattle. And we've got Joe with us today. Uh, Joe works at Emerson School and he runs one of the largest podcasts on the internet. Joe, I don't know if you know this, but Eagles what? View Podcast is one of the largest. Well, okay, it may not be the largest, but it's a great <laughs> student produced podcast. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is student produced podcast with Joe, uh, who runs and oversees the Eagles View Podcast. So, Joe, welcome to Shifting Schools. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how did this project get started? And by the way, congratulations on season two of the Eagles View Thank Podcast. Thank you very much. Yeah, it just dropped on uh, today, which is the f- what the fifth, fifth of October. It's, yeah, we're, we're already in October. The days are all just blending together right yeah, now. So true, but, isn't it? Yeah, and for those of you who may not be from Michigan, uh, I'm currently in Ann Arbor, which is right here. We use our <laughs> handy dandy map in Michigan to show you where we're at. And uh, Eagles View started from. I could do an old joke going like it all started in a. 5,000 watt uh, radio station in Fresno, California for the five people who get that joke. Mary Tyler Moore reference. (laughs) But um, it started at my wife, Jessica, and I would always go to Michigan State's uh, technology conference. It was like every year it was a free conference for teachers, an all-day conference to show teachers to use technology as a tool, not as a crutch. So it's like, you know, use technology for the students to like move forward into uh, being lifelong learners. So it was a great conference that they stopped doing uh, during pandemic. They haven't brought it back yet. Right. I hope they do. Yeah. There were these two teachers, uh, Grayson and Zach, who came in and said, we do a podcast with our students. And my eyes just lit up because before I was a teacher, I worked in sports talk radio for seven years. So I went. Why haven't I put these two together and used what I know about broadcasting and what I know in the classroom and let the students run it? So they got me excited. I looked into it, started a podcast at the school I was at prior to Emerson, and I made some mistakes along the way with the students. Uh, I didn't start with um, the big thing would be having a set day and time where it drops each week. If you're starting a podcast, that is like number one rule is it has to be a set schedule. If not, then you could lose audience. You can lose uh, valuable information that you're trying to give out. So when I moved to Emerson School, I decided to bring a podcast back here because I love the energy and the vibe that uh, this community has for lifelong learners in the building. And the students took to it like fish take to water. Yeah. All of a sudden, it just turned into, um, can I share this? Can I share that? Can I share this? Can I share that? And if you listen to any of the episodes, it pretty much, there's so many ideas that these students from a pre young fives to eighth graders have. And we have a lot of great activities that we do here, two extracurriculars. Um, the Quiz Bowl team made national championships, so we would promote them. Robotics made state championships. We would promote them. And they, we'd have students who were part of those teams come on and share their experiences. But a lot of after-school clubs would want to join in as well. And then it turns into using it as a tool to help those students who are struggling with like creative writing. Hmm. All of a sudden, they have uh, their papers that they want to make pod-worthy, is right. what they call it. <laughs> it's like, is this, is this project pod-worthy? So that's where we're getting a lot more interest in students writing and it's just been taken off from there the summer was amazing for all the teachers out there who always have that lull of the last two weeks of school we all know those last two weeks of school where what do we do yeah well how do we keep the kids the students interest my students last year decided are we going to be doing the are we coming in here to do the podcast over the summer didn't even think about it i was like no, summer's off. We get we get a break now. Can we? Mm. I went, yeah, we can. Write out the stuff 
and we will re pre record everything for the nine weeks, nine episodes. Yeah. So those last two weeks, it turned into like a real broadcasting uh, That's studio great. where each student was coming up with their own segments and writing it out, making a plan. So every day, those last two weeks of school, it turned into writing, ideas, recording, leadership. And we had the whole summer episodes all taken care of. That was amazing to me. And I think that's something, you know, just to point out to educators who might have a podcast or are thinking about starting a podcast at school, you you don't have to have one podcast a week that that your entire class is working on. You can pre-record mm -hmm. five or six episodes and release, uh, you know, you could do a podcasting unit in the month of November and you could have 15 podcasts by the time it's done. I'm saying kids are in groups of two. You know, you could have, you know, 15 episodes with a class of 30 and you basically have half a half a year's worth of podcasts that you could do in a month. So I think that's something to be thinking about is, is a lot of times I hear educators are like, but it's it's this it's the consist it's the constant work. Like if I start a podcast, then it's every month or every week we've got to be focused on it. Well, you don't have to. There's other ways that you can structure it. There maybe you do it once every three months, you know, and it's a review of our learning or pick your best pod worthy creative writing piece that you're going and we're going to record in the month of February for the next three months. So I think that's a really good thing for you that you kind of stumbled on because the kids got there, you know, the kids were saying, are we going to do this over the summer? But I think you learned that, Hey, well, I don't have to be on this hard week deadline. I can give myself some space and here's a little tip. That's what real podcasters do. Mm -hmm. We're recording this in October, but it's probably not going to come out until I think Trisha December, this one is slated to come out. And so we do the exact same thing because you've got so much stuff going on. It's thinking through, okay, how do I, how do I take some of that pressure of Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. is my drop time? Take that off yourself and get it, get ahead of it a little bit. You free up your own time. You free up the time for kids. You relieve some of that stress and you're still going to be dropping episodes. I mean, you do have to get ahead of it, but once you do, it's a, it's a really good way to, to just give yourself and your kids some more flexibility in the timing that they have to create a podcast. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. And, you know, the industry itself, the professional podcasting industry is talking a lot about mini series. So it's not necessarily that it has to be year round. But, you know, if you're just dipping your foot in the water, could it be set out to create a mini series to start if you're unsure? Maybe it's just five episodes. And also an episode doesn't have to be an hour, right? A 15 minute podcast episode is great. Joe, with the second season out, I'm really curious to hear what the response has been from your school community, because you've got so many different types of audiences who I am imagining engage with this, right? You've got your parents and caretakers. You have the other students who definitely want to hear their peers. You also have your colleagues. You maybe have the school board. You might have prospective families who are coming in and are coming to your district. Mm -hmm. um, what's that response been like for you? It's been very positive. Um, fam the thing is, we have the students, colleagues, uh, administration, the community in large. But a lot of these students come, like families come from all over the world, too. So we also have listeners who, like, they get to hear their grandkids when they're in India or when they're in Argentina. And they can That's hear awesome. what their grandkids are doing inside school. And they listen every week now, too. And there, it's been amazing uh the response i got from and i i'm saying i i, I want to get rid of that i want to say there it's amazing the response that the podcast is uh received because it's not just one person doing this there's a lot of teachers who have jumped on board and one in particular i want to mention is a fourth grade teacher jessica taranto she received an email from a and I got permission from her to do this. Uh, Jessica is my <laughs> wife. She works here as well. Um, she, she received an email from a parent who their son was on the first set, the season two premiere in October and said, William is now giving me his writing and asking me to look it over. And this is a fourth grader before it would be, I would just do the bare minimum or whatever, just what the teacher asked and then just be done with it. Two or three sentences done. Now it's like full like stories because 
hit in his words again he's trying to make it pod worthy right and he wants to like am i using enough uh detail am i because i want to be able to put it on the next episode so the parents in large who students have been participating in the podcast are loving it because now their kids have a new lust for writing again which they feel like they may have lost prior to 2020 now it's like they they feel like they're becoming lifelong learners and that's that's the feedback I really care about is the students idea. So yeah, I got to thank uh, her for that. And I cannot wait because a lot of my, a lot of the students who were on it last year uh, have, since it was a K eight school have moved on to like high school or other schools. So now I have a couple veterans and a new crew who mm-hmm. have already uh, starting to start recording for the new season. So I'm really excited to hear the new voices. So it feels like I'm starting all over again, but it's great. Well, and I love that you're building leadership, right? And all of a sudden you've got this leadership of, you know, your kids who've gone through it now for a season are being able to come back and say, well, you know, we can help you make your script pod worthy and here's what it takes. And, you know, we talk a lot, we talk this, we talk about this a lot in education. We talk about this a lot on the podcast, but there is something that happens for everyone when you have an authentic audience And when you are a student, when I was podcasting with my kids back in 2009 in Shanghai, there is something with for everybody. But there is something when you go to iTunes or Spotify and you get to see your recorded podcast next to your favorite artist. Like you're in the same spot like that. It doesn't get any more authentic than seeing that. And I just, you know, it's I don't know. I think that. Excuse me. I think there's so much motivation there that we, we just, we don't see. And, and understanding that when you do podcasts with students and you have them in iTunes and you have them on Spotify, there's real authenticity there and there's motivation to make your writing pod worthy. You know, it, it just is, it is for all of us. Uh, I mean, it still shocks me that I'm in Spotify and I've been doing this for six years, you know, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is the same place I go to listen to music and one click away is me. You know, you just put yourself in a, in a different level and kids see that as well. Uh, we're really interested because I mean, there's so many things that you cover when you're creating a podcast with students. And, you know, this year, a lot of schools are focused in on a social emotional learning, SEL, this idea of soft skills. What have been some of the soft skills, so, some of the soft skills that you think your students have learned and picked up along the way? And what connections do you think that adds to their for being creative, their idea of being empathetic towards others? Can you just talk about what what is the skill set that you're seeing kids, you know, actually bring to the forefront in creating this podcast as well? Well, here at Emerson, our core values are a lot of soft skills in general. We practice every day, not just the students, but everyone inside the building, curiosity, creativity, empathy, resilience, and integrity. So they see it from the teachers. So they, you, you, this te- us as educators, we show them all those core values. So they like to do it as well. And when it comes to like empathy, one of my, one of the most popular episodes last year was the kindness challenge. Mm. This was just like the student's idea if you listen to it, and if you not, uh, if you haven't, please go to the Eagles View and check out season one, uh, the kindness challenge, one of the popular ones. These three students uh, came together and wanted to give ideas to people out there. If you're having a bad day, just choose kindness and what you can do to help other people out by just being kind and what it will do to give you a better attitude. So I'm like, I didn't. OK, let's record it. And all of a sudden. It started rolling and that was that one really got the podcast started where more people wanted to join in and it all started with kindness so the students ideas of doing that that skill is amazing yeah public speaking obviously is a big thing when it comes to uh, creating a podcast because we have a lot of students in there especially at younger ages who are very shy they won't raise their hand even though because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake so with those students i typically record them just with me at the computer and they're by themselves. So if they make a mistake, it's okay. Cause I always just tell them like, you know, if you make a mistake, don't start at the beginning of your uh, paper because you can just pause for three seconds, take a breath and then start at the beginning of that sentence. Because once it comes out, it's going to sound like you didn't make any mistakes whatsoever. 
and then I tell them like, you know, musical artists do that too, because they, if that's not the real singing voice that they're putting out, out, out there. So public speaking, the shy, the shy students really start to find their voice. And then all of a sudden when other students inside or people in the community hear them, they're no longer shy because people are coming up to them asking their opinions like, oh, I didn't know you spoke that well. So all of a sudden they're starting to become taking more of a leadership role as well. Um, we've, you've already, Jeff, you already mentioned earlier with the leadership skills of having the old crew helping out the new crew. The season two host, uh, Matre, was hosted and had so many segments on season one that there was no one I could else I could ask to be on here. And all of a sudden they hear hers and they went, because a lot of students like, I want to host, I want to host. At the beginning, I used to host. But then I kept saying, this is a podcast for the students, by the students. So why is this old teacher hosting it? So I had them fire me on the air. <laughs> they, they, they got rid of me. I got fired. I got kicked to the curb. And after that, it really took a new life again, because now he had more students who wanted to show their personality by hosting and lead the segments, like talk to their friends and other grades to put a show together. Like those are the skills that I'm really uh, excited to see each and every week. That's great because, you know, we talk a lot about how, yes, an authentic audience can be very motivating for students. But I think we also need to ask ourselves this question. How are we allowing these kind of rehearsal moments for students to practice having an authentic audience? And that's what you described, right? Um, right. And I, I think podcasting is such a, a powerful and beautiful way to do that. Joe, I know folks will be listening and they will be thinking, all right. Maybe this is this coming new year is the year that I'll start a student podcast with a cohort of, of learners. What are a few questions that you think anybody who's getting ready to start that journey? What are some questions you think they might want to be thinking about or what's some advice you might have for somebody who's just getting ready to enter into that space of podcasting with students? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, number one I could think of is be patient. Mm. Be patient. Don't expect to have a large audience or anything at the beginning. Make a reasonable schedule for yourself and your students. Jeff, you mentioned it earlier. You could, in one or two weeks, you could get three months done. I learned that by accident yeah. in the summer where I got three months worth of podcasts done in the last two weeks of school. So though, that's when a lot of students are checked out. Take advantage of those times that you have where it's like maybe you don't have a lot of curricular things to do. That's where you keep the learning going. Hmm. And you could get a couple months worth of episodes in the can. They really, my students really like the insider talk when I throw yeah. it in there. <laughs> can we get it in the can? It's like, yes, we can. <laughs> um, like, but you, it has to be your schedule too. You have to yeah. make it so you work. Another thing I'd say advice would be, Think, keep it simple, keep, think small. Focus on your classroom first. Try not to go whole school wide. See, I, I'm now trying to go whole school. Like the goal for the Eagles view this year is to have each grade represented instead of just fourth and fifth, like whoever's in my hallway. Now we want to try to get like the young fives in there. How can they contribute to it uh, at such a young age in kindergarten? So that's where we came up with the idea of the joke of the week segment. Oh, cool. So, like, who doesn't laugh at a five-year-old telling you a knock-knock joke that you've heard maybe a thousand times? But when they say it, it's like, oh, that's adorable. So, <laughs> like, but focus on your classroom first and then let it expand at your schedule and the student schedule. Uh, but how do you do that? Share it. Hmm. Share it. Put it in the newsletter. Uh, we are on, which we're on many different platforms as well. Like Jeff said, uh, you talked about, I'm on Spotify. That's amazing. Yeah. That's the way I feel sometimes too. And it's like, not even my voice anymore. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I upload it and it's like, Hey, that's on Spotify or Hey, Alexa, play the Eagles view. Okay. And then it yeah. plays. That's, <laughs> that's where you feel like you're a rock star all of a yeah, sudden absolutely. inside the classroom. And, but most importantly, besides the scheduling and your schedule and keeping it simple, Remember who this is for. This is for the students. Let the students know that this is their creation. This is their podcast. 
and then it will run itself. Yeah, I agree. I mean, once you get kids into it and you, it only takes one episode for kids to hear themselves in iTunes or Spotify one episode. And it's just, that's my voice. That's me. Look where I am. And then you can take a back seat and just be a, be a manager. You know, you're the, mm-hmm. you're managing the studio. Uh, that's what you become. I'd like to, uh, it could, because if, if teachers are thinking about starting this, you know, next semester, or they're starting to wrap their heads around this, can we talk a little bit about the nitty gritty type of things? One parent permission, uh, how do you, did you get parent permission? Because it's only audio. A lot of times that's a lot easier to get parent permission than sometimes yes. picture or video of a kid. Uh, so let's talk about that. Talk about that first. How did you get parent permission? Did you, what, 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 what was that like for you, your school? I let, uh, we have the parent permission thing at the beginning of the year inside their handbook of using audio or video for okay. their, uh, child. And if they say audio, it's fine. If they say just don't use the video, that's fine as well. I'm also very protective of the students. So that's why whenever they're writing anything, no last names. Mm. It's just your first name and what grade you're in. I like so that. they never say their last name. That that keeps uh, the parents happy as well because they'll right. just say the name. If a kid could just turn their head and, oh, that's my full name. Yeah. So we're very protective of that. I, it's First name, what grade they're in, that's it. I like that. Let the parents know ahead of time that you're interested in them joining the podcast. Let the teachers, their homeroom teacher know as well, just in case you do expand through other grade levels. But that's pretty much it. It's like the handbook pretty much takes care of it. Make sure you get a copy of anyone who is not on the, who's on the don't fill my uh, child list. Yeah. Then reach out to them ahead of time. Because one of my students, like you know, Matre, is an example because like they're like no video, but they were okay with it. So now she's my all star. So Matre, yeah. if you're watching, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that's I think that's I, that's a really good point. Is a lot of times, even though and uh, for a million different reasons, teachers or student or sorry parents don't want their child to be audio or video, and there's all kinds of reasons to do that, and 100 percent respect that. But there's also sometimes just the it's easier for me just to say no and for teachers to ask when it's okay. And I think that is a perfect example of that. And I've had that as well, where all of a sudden a student who was on the no audio list said, I really want to produce something for the podcast, but I know, I know the kid knew, I know I can't, you can't record my voice. And I said, well, let's reach out to your parents. And so an email to the parents with a, here's a link to the podcast in, and, uh, you know, and, uh, Apple, you know, iTunes at the time, you know, your, your child would really like to be a part of this. This is, this is how we protect your child. It's first name only grade level. If, if you're okay with that, or we can leave off the grade level, or they can just be a guest from the school. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can get that child to still be a part of it and usually be able to, you know, support parents in their decision as well. And a lot of times it was just that there was an actual episode in iTunes that my child was going to be able to be in was enough for every parent to be like, Oh yeah. Well, I didn't realize you were going to be in iTunes. I thought this was right. just a school project. And as soon as it became an iTunes thing, they're sending their link to everybody, you know? And so there's, I, 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 I think there are ways that you can usually, you know, you can meet parents halfway and still get that child into the podcast if they really want to be in the podcast. They're a big part Which I have done too. Yeah. Uh, for there, there have been some times that parents are just like, it's their child. We have to respect that. Respect and I that. completely yeah. do. And we do respect that at our school as well. So the other ways you can do it too, if you are at that point where you have a student who has great writing, great things that they want to share, but they just can't get that permission you could always have another student, one of their friends, read it for them and say, this, uh, my friend, you know, Jimmy. Great idea. Has a great, I've done that before. Like, so, cause it's either a parent would say they don't feel comfortable with it, even if it is on Spotify or whatever. Sure. You got it. You have to respect that. It's, right. It's absolutely. Just, it's common courtesy too. But there's also those students who are still shy around and like they have great things, but they're just afraid to they don't like their voice they're going through you know yeah things so they ask can a friend record it for me i'm like absolutely and they'll give them credit for it and then they hear that's what i wrote and yeah <laughs> Jim, and jimmy read it for me and he yeah. he messed up this word but it's okay because he still helped me out so yeah it gets the community together even for 
if you have those roadblocks, there's ways around it where they can still share their work because we all know in podcasting inside the classroom, it's no longer four walls. They're at a podium. They're like, you know, reading their play like it's from Despicable Me to and Agnes's mother's day. Home. <laughs> once it, once you realize that you can go past the walls and you show yeah. them the ratings of where the podcast is played, all of a sudden the game over game over. Or no, game on. Yeah. That's right. It, so yeah, true. interestingly, and I'm not sure where um, the editing happens for your show, but with older students, we had that same issue where some students, um, you know, did not want their voice to be in the show. And so GarageBand actually lets you add different effects. And that was a workaround mm-hmm. that we did where, I mean, they had fun where it was like even the make it sound like a phone call distorts. If you put it up strongly enough, that effect really changes the voice. You can make it sound like a robot. Um, so there's lots of different ways to get around that. And then I also think, you know, of course, there's lots of different roles that support a student podcast. So I don't know, Joe, if at this stage, any of your students are doing like marketing for the show or, you know, creating posts that your school's social media can put out. Um, But I I think, again, uh, producing a podcast is a hugely collaborative venture. So there's lots of different ways for students who might not have that permission to get involved. Um, Yes, we do actually have some uh, students that put up uh, flyers and went on uh, social media and was trying to get the word out as well. So great. That's that's super cool. And and what a great, you know, again, authentic audience for them as well. Right. They're talking about a real product. They're talking about a real experience that they are marketing and it supports their classmates. Joe, for our listeners who are thinking, I would love to support the Eagles view, we do know that, you know, ratings and reviews, especially in Apple podcasts, they can do a lot for small independent shows. So uh, you already mentioned the kindness episode. If any of our listeners were going to go check out another episode or uh, leave you a review, where where would you direct them to go? And what what is some of the feedback you might want them to focus on giving inside of one of those reviews? Uh, I, feedback just needs to be real uh, feedback. It has to be, uh, we talked about this today because Jeff, I took some of your advice from uh, podcasting and Trisha, where you both said pause in between segments and let the students discuss it. So we did it today. And some of the feedback that I got, which I'm looking over there was uh, have someone say their name a little bit louder or their segment was over two minutes. So can we like maybe make it a little bit shorter? The sound effect was too loud. Like, like that's the type of feedback that we're looking for. Constructive criticism where we can improve instead of bring down. Why bring down when you can just go bring up? So where they can find the podcast? You can go to emerson-school.org. That's our homepage for our school in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Right here. <laughs> My handy dandy math, always, always with me. And it's on the homepage there. Take you to the link. We pretty much broadcast our homepage is on anchor.fm slash Emerson dash school. And you can find there, but we, it also is available on Apple podcast. It's available on iHeartRadio. It's available on Spotify, which is part of anchor. So that's an easy one. It's available on Google podcast. And, uh, Am- yeah, I already said earlier too. Amazon uh, Music, so you can Great. if you follow, subscribe. That's the big thing is not just listening to it once, but hitting that follow key so you can get each updated episode on your phone, on your music device, on your car. It'll say new episode of the Eagles View, and it'll be the student title that they put on there. Each episode, we try to limit it to ten minutes or less because the students told me. Anything longer than that, they check out. Yeah, and since it's their, since it's their podcast, I try to keep it at ten minutes. There's one episode in particular that's over ten minutes. That I would say listen to is called was the first episode of Play What. That was the uh, title of the episode because one of my students who is no longer at the school because they moved to Shanghai to go to the Music Institute. She was a she's a child prodigy, a uh, classic uh, pianist, and. Wow. If you hear her rendition of playing the piano, because she just came up to me one day and went, can I share my piano playing and put it on the podcast? And I'm thinking, when you're thinking of fifth grader coming up to you, you're thinking, (laughs) twinkle, twinkle, little star or the Star Wars theme or whatever. And she sent me the video. I was blown away by 
by it. It's, I, I can't even explain it. So I would check out Play What as well. I think that was in February of 2022. It was after the Kindness Challenge. Those are the top two episodes for me. And anything else that's happening in season two right now. I don't even think I've made the best episode yet. That's right. You definitely, you definitely have. And so call to action for our listeners. If you teach primary school and you're having conversations about constructive criticism, conversations about feedback that drives learning forward, perhaps listen to one of those episodes of The Eagle's View, draft some feedback for the show and authentically leave it as a review so you can connect your students with Joe's. Um, and, and again, I, I think that's a great exercise in thinking about What's I love that phrase, Joe, the, the feedback that's going to lift us up. Right. So mm-hmm. uh, there's a little bit of a call to action if you'd like to connect with the podcasters from the Eagles view. Yeah. And I think it's uh, and again, Joe, I mean, first of all, thank you for taking our advice and having kids go back and listen to their own podcast, pause and get feedback. That's huge. And if you are a teacher. I mean, bringing this full circle, if you're a teacher that's getting ready to launch a podcast with your kids and you don't know where to start, start by having your students go and listen to the Eagles view, listen through it all the way through. It's only a 10 minute episode. Then go back, listen through it in segments and start giving feedback. The music was a little too loud here. I didn't hear the kid's name here. Great. Cause we're going to produce our own podcast and we need to make sure the music isn't too loud here. A kid says you're, it's a great way to get, get your own podcast started is by going and listening to other student produced podcasts, taking down some feedback, give that feedback back to them. But also you're starting to think now when I record, I need to make sure my voice is right. I need to make sure our audio is not too loud, which is always the hardest thing with kids because they want to blare the music in the background and tell them it's got to be just down here. You know, it's, it's tough. Um, so, so that's, uh, so great feedback. So that whole loop of if you're getting ready to start, leave feedback for them, but it's also a great way to start your own podcast with kids is going and listening to other podcasts as well created by students. So uh, that's great. And seeing that we're on the podcast train, Trisha, do you want to uh, throw out your podcast? If people want to listen to Trisha and her amazing podcast, Trisha, where can people find your podcast? Oh, Jeff, that's super kind. Uh, yeah. If you head over to allyed.org, that's A-L-L-Y.org, you can check out the Be A Better Ally podcast. That comes out every Thursday morning. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and yeah. Jeff, you know, if folks want to follow you. You've got a brand new channel on TikTok. I don't know if you want to let folks know about that. Well, I mean, there's no dancing yet. Not guaranteed yet. there won't be in yet. the future, but yet, yet to be in the keyword, no dancing the yet. But yeah, the power of yet. Yeah, the power of yet. But uh, you can follow me over on TikTok. We're releasing all kinds of, of things around. Uh, a lot of it's behind the scenes uh, video footage of the podcast itself. You can see there. Uh, but you can follow me at TikTok. It's J U T E C H T, same as it is on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere else. J in my last name, U T E C H T. You can find me there as well. Uh, awesome. Thank you, my friend, Joe. Thank you so much for uh, taking some time. I know you've got a parent meeting. You're running off to school just ended 15 minutes ago. Typical teacher, middle of the, you know, middle of the school year. Got a million things doing. So thank you so so much for spending some time. We will make sure there are links to the podcast where people can go leave reviews, everything in the show notes. So please do head down there. uh, And if you... If people want to reach out to you, Joe, what's the best way for people to reach out if they do have questions or maybe they want to connect your classes together to give feedback? Uh, Best place to go to is the uh, Emerson School website. So uh, Emerson uh, school dot org faculty page or on uh, the Eagles View homepage on anchor dot FM. There's an actual leave feedback page as well, and that is a recorded audio that you could send that we could use for future episodes as well. I haven't uh, I haven't heard, had a lot of future I haven't had a lot of feedback on that one because they don't like the sound of their voice or whatever. But yeah. uh, best way is to go to the Emerson School website, so Emerson School dot org. Faculty and staff Joe Taranto. My email address is there. It would be J T A R A N T O at Emerson School dot org. Awesome. And we'll make sure that those links are in the show notes. Thank you so much, Joe, Trisha. Thank you. It's been awesome. Go off podcast with your kids. Get started. This is a great episode to motivate you. uh, If you're getting ready for the next school year or getting ready for that next month uh, that you can go out and get podcasting started. So thank you both. And until next time, we'll see you on the network.